I fixed over 300 NAS units, and I'm gonna share with you all of the repair secrets for this Synology DS1512+. Plus. The most common fault we see is the blue light will keep blinking endlessly, but the unit never fully boots. I'm also gonna show you how to fix the completely dead no power fault. Let's begin by taking the unit apart. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick. I started Nick's Electronics Repair more than a decade ago, and since then we have fixed over 27,000 devices. Now the first thing I'm gonna show you is something you should do with every repair regardless of the fault, and that is to replace the CMOS battery. Because the 15 1512 was manufactured in 2012, it makes this unit about 13 years old. A CMOS battery doesn't usually last past 10 years, sometimes even up to 15 years depending on operating conditions. With that said, if you have your unit open, it's such an easy replacement, it's just a good idea to do it since it will avoid a potential no power fault in the near future. The top battery is our original and we're not getting any voltage out of it. The bottom one is the replacement and we are getting 3.29 volts. So that does confirm the original battery was defective and does need to be replaced. So here's a sneak peek to all the parts will be in installing today. If you're trying to fix your NAS yourself, you can get this kit from our website and I'll have a link in the video description below. Next, let's tackle the most common problem, which is the blue light blinking endlessly and the unit never actually initializing. The most common reason for this is a defective DOM, which is disk on module. The disk on module is this little daughter board over here. I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers to pinch this plastic clip and at the same time, lift the daughter board away from the circuit board. The most common reason for a defective DOM is the flash disk controller IC on the back, which is at ID location U1. Now these DOMs can be difficult to diagnose, but I'm gonna show you exactly how we do it. If you take a look at the connector on the DOM, you'll notice that there's a little arrow here which indicates that this is pin one. The number two is written over here, indicating pin two. So then this is three, four, five, six, and so on. So what you can do is take a USB cable, you would cut it, strip the wires, and you're gonna be left with four wires here. Now the black wire is gonna be your ground, and you're gonna to wanna to connect that to pin number seven. Now for our test setup, we have actually built a little connector situation, but if this is gonna be a one-off for you, it might make more sense to just solder the black wire directly to the pin that's exposed. The red wire, you're gonna to wanna to solder to pin one right over here. The white wire will be to pin four, and the green wire will be to pin six. Once you have it wired up, you can go ahead and connect this to your computer. We're gonna be using the USB Synology Disk Station. Continue, double click to open file. We'll save that here, DS1512 plus, continue, and start. So right now we have a 0 0.8 megabytes per second download speed or read speed, and that is much too slow. We are expecting that to be around seven to nine megabytes per second. That confirms to me we need to replace the controller chip. I do wanna give you a warning. There are three different versions of this DOM that all use a different flash disk controller. Some of them use US Best, which is what we have here today. Some of them have a Fison branded chip, and some of them have ITE branded chips. Now the ITE and Fison almost never fail. In fact, I've not actually seen one fail, but I have seen the US Best manufactured ones fail constantly, that is the number one failure we see is with the US Best chip, which is the one that we provide in our repair kits. Now it is important to know that if you have a DOM that uses the Fison or ITE and you put the US Best manufactured microcontroller chip on there, you will actually break your DOM and it definitely will not work, so do not do that. For the replacement process, I'm going to start by adding a bunch of solder to all of the pins, and I'm gonna do that on all four sides. I'm gonna also add a bunch of flux. And for the removal process, I'm gonna be using hot air, but I'm also gonna be using my iron as well. As we're warming it up, I'm just going over all four corners. Oh, there we go. We'll knock the chip off. This is actually a little faster than I expected. Now we can go ahead and remove any excess solder with the desolder braid. And using isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, we're gonna remove all of that extra flux I added. Here is our replacement. So you'll notice I have a triangle with the number one. That indicates this is pin one. I also have a little circle here, which matches with the circle here, indicating that this is pin one over here. For the installation, I typically add a little bit of solder to the first pin or two. I'll grab the chip with some tweezers and slide it in. And I wanna try and line it up as closely as I can. Oh, that was not perfect. Let's adjust. Okay, that's better. 
And everything does look lined up pretty decently. So we're just gonna solder that whole top row. And that will add more flux to the rest of the sides. Let's see if we can grab that extra solder and just bring it over. And it doesn't look like I'm gonna get rid of that last bit, so we'll use the desolder braid. All right, final cleanup. Let's add extra alcohol. Get rid of that additional flux we added. Now, to make sure that I did solder down every pin correctly, I'm gonna rake the pins with this little tool. And if any of the pins were loose, they would move and it'd be quite visible. And all of the pins are locked in. All right, we can go ahead and bring the DOM back to our computer and do another test and start. Okay, and you can see it's much faster, 9.1 nine megabytes per second. And our final average was 8.8 .8 megabytes per second. So to me, that does confirm it. We did properly fix the DOM. We can install it back on the motherboard. And now let's take a closer look at what can cause the dead no power faults. For this one, we're gonna flip the board over and twist it around. Now you'll notice a plastic sheet. So we're actually gonna peel that back and off. The DOM that we just fixed is over here on the front side of the board. And we're gonna be paying attention to these two ICs here and more specifically just below. So there are two capacitors, C627 and C629. These two capacitors can fail shorted or burnt and that'll cause a dead no power fault. So we're gonna go ahead and replace those. For the removal, I like to add a little solder to both sides. So these two capacitors are rated at 10 microfarad and 16 volts. And we're gonna be replacing them with capacitor rated for 10 microfarads, but 25 volts. And you know what? Let me actually stop. It's gonna be better to show you the resistance we're expecting. And right now I'm reading about 13 kilo ohms, rising 14 kilo ohms. So that's just to give you an idea of what to expect when you have a good capacitor. Anything lower, like 100 ohms or less, typically will mean that they are shorted and definitely need to be replaced. And we'll do the same thing to the other one. We'll clear off all of the original solder. Clean it up with isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. So here are the replacement capacitors. Again, add a little solder to just one of the pads. We'll melt it and slide in the replacement. Okay, it's locked in. Same thing to the other. And now we can add solder to the other side. I'm actually gonna rotate the board. I'm left-handed, so this just makes it a much easier angle. Oh. And I was having a hard time getting the heat to transfer into the pad itself. And that's probably because my soldering tip is a little bit old. But let's add a little flux. We'll touch this up a little bit. Make sure we have good joints. That looks better. That looks better. Rotate one more time. That looks better. And that looks better. All right, one final cleanup. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Okay, at this point we've put it back together enough to do a final life test. All right, let's power it up, wait a few minutes and see what we get. And I am gonna plug in the ethernet cable so we can detect it on the network. 
Our unit has finished booting in. The blue light is present, but it is no longer blinking. We have our status light, and of course the LAN light is present since we're plugged into the network. Now let's make sure that the unit is detectable. And it does look like we are finding it, and here it is. So of course there is no hard disk found since I don't have a drive in there, but we are seeing the unit on the network. So this does conclude the installation of the repair kit for the Synology DS1512+. Plus. If you're interested in fixing the unit yourself, again, we'll have the kits available on our website and I'll have links in the description down below. If you're not comfortable with doing some of those repairs, we do offer the flat rate services, which come with a one year warranty. Again, those are also available on our website, which I'll also link in the description below. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching.